And the Honourable Member for Windsor West. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank the member from Timmins James Bay for his intervention. And I uh, will start with uh, a little bit of acknowledging his work uh, as well domestically here with the Canada Pension Plan and ethic reviews, which are very much important. And when you think about the Canada Pension Plan, it goes back to Pat Martin, a former NDP colleague, uh, who for many years uh, said that we actually have to have a green and ethical screen on our investments at the Canada Pension Plan. And for those Canadians tuning in right now, how disgraceful it is to this day that our pension plan has actually supported child labour, uh, invested in everything from guns, tobacco and other types of uh, endeavours that would be seen as like reprehensible. And we still continue to have uh, this arm's length approach for how we use the public funds uh, from many people who are activists against this and many investors in Canada who actually include small, medium-sized businesses that have to compete globally uh, against our own investments that we have in these types of natures and endeavors. And uh, myself coming from an industrial town uh, in Windsor and Essex County have seen you know, our job losses at the expense of using child and forced labor, which Madam Speaker, also includes not only just the um, abuse of those individuals, but has been used by other countries for ethnic cleansing and other types of imperialism uh, put on themselves. And many times it's been through investors coming from, from our own country. So we've actually undermined our own self. And I've been at the meetings where I've had, for example, uh, unions from Mexico come down and said to us, like, don't do the investments are allow the investments because you're abusing our women, our children, and our men, and that is a short-term gain that they get for jobs through exploitation versus that of long-term proper investment in humanitarian advancements that are necessary. So we finally, um, thanks to the good work of the member from Winnipeg, Transcona, and he carried on from his father's amazing work in this chamber, being Bill Blakey, um, we got actually with the U.S.-Canada-Mexico agreement, uh, at least some type of a labor and some type of a uh, environmental lens that can be applied to our agreement. But we see how fragile that is with even the United States in this last number of weeks uh, being identified uh, with problems on labor and using children, including the Ford Motor Company, which is, you know, founded in many respects from my riding here and across from Detroit, Michigan. These are real things that are happening because we don't impress upon the right standards that are necessary and we don't do the routine things that we should. And I want to transition a bit to talk about one of the routine things is with our Customs and Immigrations Union. And Madam Speaker, I've been here at the beginning um, where they used to actually use students to cover um, their um, employment uh, breaks uh, at the border. In this past year, um, we have seen again, uh, uh, the government not taking the contract and the types of supports necessary very seriously. And so when we talk about the CBSA and our men and women that are on the front line for us every single day, uh, we don't give them the proper supports. And that's what's upsetting about today's debate and the verbiage coming from the government side on this is because the routine thing we could do is actually support our CBSA uh, officers, our men and women who've had to deal with extraordinary circumstances under COVID, um, underfunding, and in fact, this last summer had to go into forced um, practices to actually be able to staff properly because this government has mishandled the actual implementation of the right people. And on top of that, they have actually even moved to try to actually move more automation as opposed to uh, men and women at our border as a policy. That's really what the Arrive Canada uh, situation was. We know that it's had lots of discussion in the House in terms of its mismanagement as an application on your phone. But at the end of the day, what the real thing was, was this was about the Liberals trying to defund um, men and women at the border. And we've seen that at airports, uh, we've moved to automation, and then we're seeing that at the land border, which is unacceptable, especially where, you know, I've been fighting for uh, over 20 years, and we're finally getting it, a new border crossing here in Windsor, Nessus County, the Gordie Howe Bridge. Um, but there's going to be a shortage of officers. And that's the best line that we actually have to be able to back up the policies that are spoken about uh, in legislation that's made in the House right here. 
Why is it that we have underfunding at our ports? Uh, why is that we check very few of those facilities? Why is it that the men and women at our CBSA don't have the proper technology or the right supports? And I've been in this House and Chamber when Liberal then, uh, Derek Lee, called them wimps. And they call, he called them wimps, and the government did nothing to actually discredit themselves from that statement uh, because they weren't getting the proper supports at that time. And what we did do is we actually then moved to a modernization process and gave them some better skills and some better supports. But still, through successive governments, they are constantly having to go through contract renegotiations and often working without a contract and a collective agreement on a regular basis. And, and that's unacceptable. And so if we want to do the routine things to back up what we say in this chamber, one of the things that we could do is support our men and women at the border. And what that means is proper identification. And those things that they can do are very much a skill set that's important for not only just ending issues with regards to forced labor and um, types of trade agreements that we don't enforce on the on the, the, the shipping levels, but then arrive on our doorstep here, but also public safety. So done of all the work on fraud and prevention of, uh, of, of different types of things coming into our country. And I always remember um, the fact that we have a lot of different devices, different types of materials coming into Canada that need to be checked on a regular basis that are actually important for our economy to actually be checked because we're competing against uh, manufactured knockoffs and a series of different things. And we just can't, you know, assume that they're just, you know, uh, garments or clothes. The reality is, is some of the knockoffs that we have seen come into our Canadian uh, society and also even our industrial uh, manufacturing industry include parts for hospitals, airplanes, cars. Uh, these are all things that are actually getting through our system right now, but are actually uh, things that we can identify and deal with if we do the proper training and supports. And so when we talk about today's motion um, and the fact that we have uh, you know, identified this particular issue with regards to especially the Uyghurs and what's taking place, a genocide and a series of other exploitations that are very important, um, is we have to come back to what we can control. And what we can control right now at this time is supporting our CBSA officers by having proper collective agreements, by having proper training facilities, and by doing proper staffing on a regular basis all the time. And that's where we can control something and make a difference at this moment. Uh, having words in the House and dealing with the larger corporate issues um, that we have less control over are things that are going to be challenging and we should take them on. But again, I referenced the CBSA one because it could be done in a heartbeat. Uh, the issue related to uh, our Canada Pension Plan, that can be done in a heartbeat. Uh, that's a political appointed process to get actually on their ethics board and actually follow through. And I think the member for Timmins, James Bay, brings in a really good point in terms of accountability, uh, being back on our shores here for, uh, I guess, the investments and the exploitation that takes place. And there's no reason we couldn't start that in-house with our actual own uh, investments that we do as a country and as a government nation, uh, deciding how our own public money is used. And I think, Madam Speaker, one of the things that becomes the most upsetting about this is that those are the simple things that we can control, and yet we hear more excuses and more complaints um, from the government having to exercise basically the systems that they have employed at their fingertips. And I've witnessed this on a regular basis, and it's always been the excuse that that's the capitalist way or the free market economy that is actually out there. Well, let's take a look at that as I wrap up here, is that if the free market economy is what we want at the end of the day with no regulations, then here's what we're getting. We're getting child exploitation. We're getting women's exploitation. We're getting other um, populations that are doing migration for different reasons and uh, even in our own country, when it comes to foreign workers coming in, exploitation. So it's up to us as policymakers to make the decisions to make things change. If we wanna just accept the free market the way it is right now, then you are literally accepting the exploitation of children, women, and migrant workers as a status quo. And that's unacceptable from my standpoint as a New Democrat. And I think it's unacceptable for most members in this chamber, but at the end of the day, it takes real action on the controllables that we do instead of complaining about the things we can't.